everybody welcome back to another episode of a gardener's journey homestead i am barbara thank you so much for stopping by if you're brand new thank you so much for stopping by my channel we're gonna have a good time today we are in the high tunnel um it's a little cold outside it's cold and rainy today um but it's about 55 degrees um in the tunnel so it's at least bearable and manageable but if you're new to me i'm in zone 7a i'm in tennessee and on this channel we talk about all things gardening homesteading cooking from scratch preserving food you name it we talk about it um and today i'm planting some stuff in the high tunnel and then i'm going to also take you and show you around for like maybe an end of the month january garden tour so and if you're not new here thank you so much for stopping by again so it's almost the last week of january it's hard to believe we're already towards the end um, of the month and as you guys know we had a winter storm that came through here about probably about three weeks ago now it's like right before christmas um and i did lose some of my crops so i have restarted a lot of those um seeds they are in the house all is doing well for the most part some of them got a little bit leggy just because i was um traveling um, but i'm still trying to keep them alive and, and bring them back but i went to this amazing farm workshop um this past week and i'll tell you more all about that in a separate video but at the farm workshop i was able to um get some starts that um the owner of the farm was giving away so we got some beautiful bok choy and lettuce that he gave us that we're actually going to get in the ground because it's ready so you can see hubby back there he is doing um one bed um, of lettuce and then what I didn't show in video I've already planted like 80 bok choy so let me show you what this bok choy looks like it is beautiful look at that this side is lettuce but look at this the bok choy and this is I've had it now for like three or four days so it's really ready to come out um <clears throat> out of this so the other day I went ahead and got the 80 bok choy in there um because I was short on time so I didn't get a chance to video it but I thought I would at least bring you along today as we're getting the lettuce um, in the ground um, in some of these beds that are empty. So let's go and I'll show you what we're doing. I saw us planting that bed of lettuce. Um, I'm not sure how many we planted. If I had to guess, let's see. Probably about 20, 20 or 30. Um, then I was going over to another bed to see what space I could eke out to plant more lettuce um, because he gave us a lot of starts. <laughs> um, it's a P200 tray, and of course there's 200 starts in there, and I have a lot of them. But I was looking at my carrots, and... A lot of these, they're not real big, but I did have a nice size one somewhere. Where, where was it? Come on, honey, you can bring it in here. Look at that. That's pretty. This is the um, purple dragon carrot. It's, it's orange on the inside. It's my first time growing this. So that's my first real purple dragon carrot. A lot of these are tiny and small. Um, 
one of the things that I heard at that farm workshop that I went to, he was saying that if your carrots have really pretty big tops, but the carrot itself is not growing, um, it could be a sign that you have too much nitrogen in your soil, uh, and the nitrogen will cause it to not grow as big. Like, that's a nice size one. But the rest of these are, like, really small. But you know what? Oh, here's another good one. These, I think, are Danvers half. So I've never done the Danvers half, so I need to look it up. But does that mean it's half the size? Like, maybe they're supposed to be this size. I'm not sure, but that's a nice size one. But all the rest of them that are not maybe as big, like maybe this one, it's still edible. So I'm going to wash all these and um, store them, and then I can chop them up and put them in the freezer. I can use it for a carrot cake. If I shred them, I can use it and do it in, in cubes and make like carrots, um, like glazed carrots. So I think I still have enough to make something, even though, oh, hubby's bringing more. Wow. So again, a lot of these are small. I haven't been 100% successful with carrots yet, but it keeps getting better year after year. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and take these up so we can get the space. But you can't really see. It's a whole lot of green right there, but you can kind of see there the carrots. So every little bit counts. feels so good to put your hands back in soil um it's it's been a week or so <laughs> since i put my hands in soil i don't necessarily call the um the sowing the seeds i mean you don't feel a lot of the soil doing it that way but it feels good to put your hands in the soil of course y'all know i'm excited super super excited for the spring and summer season so uh, we've got everything in planted we probably have planted at least a hundred bok choy and lettuce if i had to guess probably maybe 60 or 70. I'm going to take you around and let you kind of see. We'll do a walk around the garden and let you see what's going on um, in the tunnel. Um, and of course, behind the house, we've pulled everything up because that stuff did not survive the winter frost that we had um, about three weeks ago. The only thing that's left are two beds of garlic. And of course, the garlic is fine. Um, and I'm not going to plant anything, even though I have stuff left over from these starts. I'm not going to plant anything back there. I'm saving that for onions, I think still trying to decide but I don't think I'm gonna plant anything back there it is I don't know if the word refreshing is the right word but it's good that I don't have to worry about covering it up when the temperature gets so low with the tunnel unless it goes back to single digits like we had the last time if it's like 20 something degrees we just close up the tunnel put down the sides and go on about our way easy easy but outside you got to put the cover on and clip them and all that so I'm enjoying not having to do that outside <laughs> right now I'm just gonna take my I'm gonna take my break I'm gonna take my rest but let me show you the lettuce that we planted this is um, red sweet crisp you can see isn't that beautiful that is so beautiful it's gonna be a pretty pretty salad mix um, this is what we have left over you can see we probably got half of this tray done, you can see there. And there's 200 starts in this tray, so that tells you how much we planted. I had um, two trays of the Sweet Crisp. Like this one is still probably over half full. I've called some friends to come get um, these starts if they want them because Sharon is caring. Um, and then I also have another tray left of bok choy as well, which I showed you the bok choy. So he gave me four P200 trays. Um, a P200 tray has 200 um, things in it, like plugs. You can kind of see the depth. And I'm going to be talking more about this because I learned some stuff at the workshop about using these trays. And I want to show you guys how easy this comes out. Do you see that? 
one of the questions I had at the workshop, remember you guys have seen me use these plug trays before. They're called plug trays. And I have some. And it's great if you want to start a mass amount of seeds and it takes up less space than 100 cups, 100, you know, pots like this. But the challenge that I always have is getting them out, right? Um, you're trying to pop them out and all that. And so that was one of the questions I had at this farm workshop. And he was like, great question. Look at this, y'all. Do you see how easy that comes out? Do you see? Look at that. And do you see that root system? This comes out like this because of the tray and because of the soil that he used. They're supposed to just come out. I mean, literally, y'all, I can go all the way down this tray. They just come out. There's no popping from the behind. I mean, from the bottom. There's no maneuvering. You just literally just pull it up like y'all saw me do. Let me just do one more because I know you're not believing me. Get it where you can see. Just like that. Do you see that? The tray and the soil. So these P200, you can kind of see the length of this and how it's. But if you can see, look at the root system. The root system develops quickly. And when you use the right soil and the root system develops quickly, it'll just pop out. It'll literally just come out. And that's what is supposed to happen. So I am now a re believer <laughs> in plug trays now i'm gonna try it myself and see if i get the same results but it's a joy working with this when they just pull up now the trays i have are not p200s but i am going to use these since i'll have these left over and try them and then i'll buy me some more the trays i have are like a i think it's a one it's like 128 sales and the, the shape is a little bit different it's like a more round versus these are more slender but i thought that was a great tip use the right soil use the right tray they'll come up just like that now let me know if you guys have any commentary on that if your stuff is coming right up and i am i the only one that's hard to get the stuff up out of the tray or are you guys having a hard time too let me know but let me turn you around and show you what we have done so in this bed remember this is where the cauliflower was this is now all bok choy so that's at least i don't know 60 or so bok choy you can see um, I planted this a couple of days ago so that's looking good over here is the bed with um, the kale that we had already planted and then um, we got some Swiss chard over there on the right so that's still looking good look at our basket of carrots that we harvested we got a whole basket and I would say probably 60% of them are on the small side, and this is what I'm calling the small side. And then the rest are like a decent carrot size. So I'll take it. I will take it. Over here, we planted more bok choy. So, bok choy. so we have three rows of bok choy. We have some baby kale that was already here that we planted. It's doing fine. And then also, these are the carrots that we direct seeded. Maybe maybe about four or five weeks ago so they're coming up so we'll have some more carrots that we can harvest in a couple of months this is another tray of starts that I have this is a um, like a European blend lettuce mix and then that's just more bok choy okay so over here we planted lettuce that's the um, red summer crisp that I just showed you um, as you can see hubby is like watering everything in there and giving it a good little juicy bath and then we planted lettuce so pretty much this whole bed is lettuce we have some kale here that we had already established that made it through the frost and then our cilantro made it too so we have our cilantro here and we actually grew this from seed okay so then here oh let me put this little guy up um we planted some of that european type lettuce just to, just to use this space up and then these are just pansies that survived the frost as well so let me take you around here this is um we planted a whole lot of lettuce in this bed there you can see and hubby is going to water that in 
and then this is the spinach that survived the frost so it is doing good here is our kale that's some Siberian curly kale this is some lacento kale we planted some lettuce there this is spinach this one needs to come up that one's doing good and then you look at our eucalyptus and then we planted more lettuce over there and behind there on that row bed of herbs is still doing okay we got our rosemary eucalyptus i need to take the dead leaves off you can see that there is some damage there to the eucalyptus that's oregano i probably need to take some of these and some of the rosemary got brown as well let me know if you guys grow rosemary and eucalyptus i'm assuming should i just take these dead leaves off and just clip them and then keep like that part that's what my brain tells me so i think that's what i'm gonna do here is the collard throw you guys have seen that they're still doing good just moving a little slow the kale down here is all empty so i didn't use this space for the bok choy and for the lettuce because i have some seeds that i've started in the house of collard cauliflower and broccoli so i'm saving this space for that so i planted more of the bok choy here and took up this space this is where we had um i think broccoli was right here and it did not do as well in the frost so we put the bok, bok, bok choy there that's still empty over there we're going to keep it empty for the seeds that's in the house and then we'll walk down this way You can see the cabbages are still looking good. I actually harvested two cabbages on Friday and we ate them for dinner. They were really, really good. They were small. It took two to feed us, but it was still very, very good. So I haven't quite cracked the code on cabbage. You know, I talk a lot about progress, right? So I definitely have made progress because you can see my cabbages are still alive and I was able to harvest two and actually cook them and put them on the dinner table. They were small. So if you have any tips, let me know what I need to do to make them bigger um, and what I could be doing wrong or if there's some supplement that they need that I don't know about. So it's all about progress over perfection, right? So the first year I grew, tried to attempt to grow cabbage, nada, got nothing. Last year, uh, most of my cabbage got eaten up by the worms. I think I only had one cabbage that I was able to salvage and to eat. So this year, I've had two. Two is better than one. Two is greater than one. So that's progress. And I still have uh, four more in the ground. Um, so that's progress. It's not perfection. I love, love, love cabbage. My ideal, I, you know, guys, I started a lot of cabbage seeds that just haven't made it because of the bugs, especially the ones that I, I started a lot and put them outside and they didn't make it because of the bugs. But we love cabbage. I love cabbage. I eat it probably at least once a week. So I ideally wanted to grow a lot of it so that I could um, preserve it, right? Like dehydrate it, um, something like that. But it hasn't quite worked out that way. And the last time when I did a spring planting of cabbage, by May, it gets so hot and humid here, the bugs just they went crazy with it so they didn't last they were looking pretty and then they got eaten by bugs and i didn't grab it soon enough so i told myself i wasn't going to do cabbage in the spring anymore because it was just a waste of time and effort i may start some more cabbage seeds but if i do it's going to be just a few just to see if the same thing happens this spring that happened last spring but if you have any tips on cabbage let me know let me know because it's one of the things that we love to eat um, so overall, it was good to be in the tunnel today. It was good to put hands in dirt. Um, I'm very thankful for the free starts. It wasn't my plan to have all this lettuce and all this bok choy. What's wrong? Oh, 
it wasn't my plan to have all this lettuce and all this bok choy, but it was a gift. And um, what we gonna, we're not going to turn away free food and we're not going to throw away free food, right? If we can use it. I have the space, so I went ahead and planned it. What I'm going to do with 100 bok choy, I don't know. We'll figure that out when it comes time to harvest. But thank you guys so much for joining um, us today. And we also got a big old ba um, basket of carrots. So I'm really excited about that because that was not the plan today. So I'm thankful um, for that. I'll take them in the house, wash them, and store them. If you don't know how to store carrots, the method that um, I have been doing is, it's called tip and tail. You just cut the tips off and cut the tails off, give them a good wash, put them in a plastic bag, and poke some holes in them, and then put them in your refrigerator, and they should last for months. So I'm trying that, and we're going to see how, so far so good, um, but we'll see how it works. Uh, so thank you guys so much for joining us today as we planted some lettuce, some bok choy, we harvested some carrots, and I took you around and showed you what's going on in the tunnel um, near the end of January. Remember, this is all a journey. Don't give up. Be encouraged. Let's grow together. I'll see you next time, friend.